Hey, indie filmmakers, I'm Griffin Hammond. I'm Nick Bodmer, and today we go to the campaign trail in Iowa to our election 2020 reporter, Griffin Hammond. Hello there, Nick. <laughs> Hello, reporter Griffin Hammond. You said do a I'm reporter in... voice. How did I do? I don't know. I don't think it sounded like a newscaster. <laughs> I was expecting a little praise, and I got nothing. You're not okay. cut out for the for the news biz. Dang it! <laughs> felt it felt good. Jerk. <laughs> we'll get you a teleprompter. And, Comment uh, if you a thought suit. I sounded like a news reporter. <laughs> I thought I did it pretty good for my first try. Anyway, you are in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, the capital. What's going on in Iowa right now? Well, for I don't know exactly when this when this podcast episode will hit, but today is Thursday, January thirtieth, that we're recording this, and we're just what four days out from the Iowa caucuses on Monday, February third. And what are the Iowa caucuses for those of our listeners who are not politically keyed in? Well, for one, it's the the thing I'm here to film for my job, okay. and two yeah. the Iowa caucuses are the first in the nation voters go to the polls, kind of, except they don't really go to the polls. Uh, that's what's weird about the Iowa caucuses. The caucuses are actually kind of a public vote where people gather in places like high school gymnasiums and they say, I'm a Joe Biden voter or I'm a Bernie Sanders voter or I'm for Elizabeth Warren. And they stand in different corners of the room. They count themselves up. And they decide if they have enough people to give delegates to each of the candidates. Uh, Very a, good. So we are trying to determine process. who uh, will be the nominee for president of the United States for the Democratic Party. Right. Is that fair? And Iowa is just the first. Iowa is the first state, state that gets to go. That gets to go. Yeah. And most Very of the other states do normal voting. Like you in New York, you walk into the the polling booth and you just check a box and you leave. But Iowa's weird. They do caucuses. That takes I'm in like Nevada. We do the same thing. Hours. So I did that four yeah. years ago, and uh, I will do it again. I forget when, but you told me. When do I caucus, uh, Griffin? Uh, February 22nd for Nevada. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, you have the same weird process where you actually have to yes. like, go hang out with a bunch of people. Yep. <laughs> so I'm curious. You watched the film that I just released yesterday. I did. I did. This is a four-minute film about Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren on the campaign trail. I guess I'm kind of curious, like, did I do my job? Did you get a sense of, like, what's happening here in I think Iowa? so. So what I took away from it is, um, so we've got this Iowa caucus coming up. Everybody's kind of making their last-ditch efforts to get people on their quote-unquote team. Um, but Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren aren't there because they have to be in Washington, D.C. for the impeachment trial because uh, right. they're senators and all the senators are jurors in that trial. So they were sending in kind of their, uh, you know, B team <laughs> to come and right. stand in for them and, and, and bring people in. And one of the things I thought was interesting was it all seemed a lot smaller and more intimate than I expected. Like, it seemed like there weren't quite as many people as you'd expect in some of these uh, rallies or meetings. I guess these were more firing up their own kind of like volunteers as opposed to being a big event for the public. Is that Was that accurate? Right. And I kind of forgot that, too. Like, I covered the election last cycle. So I was in Iowa many times before mm -hmm. the Iowa caucuses in 2016. And I kind of forgot that this early in the process, we're still w a ways away from the general election. Things get bigger. The rallies get bigger as we get towards the general election. But here in Iowa, they have to travel. I mean, I think there's 99 counties in Iowa and many candidates try to visit them all. And wow. so, yeah, some of these events are pretty small. And I do think because of the caucuses, because of the nature of you're trying to win caucus sites all over the, the state to get delegates, it's not enough just to show up in Des Moines and do a giant 15,000-person rally in an arena right. here. You kind of have to make sure all these small pockets around the state are representing that they're going to show up for you. Would you describe that as retail politics? Yeah, you might call it retail politicking, <laughs> which I, is yeah a phrase. I, I that watch you, the West you Wing. Hear a lot say here. that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like tomorrow, I'm uh, there's a bunch of things I'm here to shoot. I'm going to shoot some town hall events, some 
uh, you know, almost no one's calling them rallies because uh, they're not that big. They're get out the vote events. Uh, Bernie Sanders is going to have some concerts here. But I'm also going to go to some canvassing events where it's just surrogates for the campaigns, uh, just walking around, going door to door, knocking on doors. Interesting. So what are the uh, any unique challenges or is it all pretty straightforward? I noticed some... Uh some nice cinematography in, in, in this thing. You got drone shots and uh, it looks really nice. Well, yeah, I think the biggest challenge is just the amount of gear that I want to bring because there's a lot of things I want to do and because there's a lot of assignments I have. You know, I want to make the short film that comes out, but I'm also here to shoot some people on camera for some some existing products that we have at the recount, uh, like mm-hmm. my boss, John Heilman, needs to go on camera. So I also need to bring a light for him and a specific lens for that shoot. So I'm kind of like here to shoot three different kinds of things. And for events, I'm bringing like a long lens. I have the uh, the Panasonic 100 to 400 millimeter here, which is only good for events and isn't going to do me any good in any other environment. So I, f- I have like four lenses, two cameras, a drone, a gimbal, a light that luckily I don't really need to bring to any of the events. But yeah, it's just a lot of stuff. I noticed in one of the shots, Julian Castro was their surrogate for I forget who he was a surrogate Elizabeth for. Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. And he had like two or three lav mics on him. Is one of those yours? Do you have to mic these people up individually or um, I, how, how does I that brought work? a wireless lav with me and I probably should have mic'd him up because um, in the end, I, I just filmed him with the, a shotgun mic right on my camera, figuring that like it was a small room, he's going to project. I don't right. mind kind of hearing the space. Although he was kind of quiet. So in the end, I did have to boost the audio a fair amount and run a noise reduction process on it in Adobe Audition. We have 10 days left until the Iowa caucus. It all starts right here. So none of those mics were live in the room. Those were other media outlets or something that had mic'd him. Right. Yeah, he may have been wearing at least one, probably two, I think I saw. Uh, I think I saw two, I, yeah. I don't even remember seeing people put them on, uh, but I do think there there was someone broadcasting live in the back of the room uh, for some, I don't know if it was local news or national news or for the campaign itself. But, uh, yeah. I just didn't think to do that. I, I don't really, for those kind of events where they just like walk right in and start talking, I don't really want to be the guy that's like, let me interrupt the natural moment that's going on and put a mic on you. <laughs> right. So, Do you have any um, closer interactions with any of these people or are you all just kind of documenting their events and staying out of the way? Any interviews? I'll occasionally talk like to that? them a little bit. I mean, I I think I said a few words to, to Julian Castro. This is the former... Uh, HUD secretary under Obama who ran for president briefly and uh, got out of the race and now is supporting Warren. I think because I was pretty close to him sometimes, I think at one point I was just like real close to him shooting a portrait and I was just like, hey, the lighting over here is really good. <laughs> just, to like, just to have like a, a human moment with sure. this person because he he's kind of looking at me like, how long are you going to be uh, shooting that weird portrait of me? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed Michael Moore, documentary filmmaker, was there. Yeah, he was uh, He was acting as a surrogate for Bernie Sanders while Bernie was still in D.C. Michael Moore and exa- Al- Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez did a rally. And my, uh, my boss actually did an interview with him for The Circus, the show on Showtime. Is that tied to the recount, or how does that work? Just kind of adjacent. It's adjacent, although, you know, I, I work with the... The team that puts together the circus, they've done, I mean, they have a lot of people here and they've done a lot of research about what is going on. So I rely on them a lot as a one-man band. I show up and it's like, uh, what am I supposed to go film? And they've already done all this research and they're willing to share it with me about like, here's what's coming up. Here's the the total schedule of events. So that's interesting. Uh, so that's a, that's Showtime, is that what we said? It's a Showtime show? Yeah. So do they have like a full left, right. crew? Yeah, they have many crews. Um, they have like three or four teams that go around the state because uh, they have so how, three hosts I of guess the show. C- compare and contrast that with what you're doing for the recount. I mean, you're still doing your more yeah. one-man band type thing. What What are the advantages and disadvantages, do you think? Well, sometimes I'm really proud when I watch 
my work and their work and I say, oh, wow, like my work is good enough to be on that show or sometimes better than the show. But yeah. I realize what I don't have to do that they have to do. And it, it makes it a little bit easier for me, but sometimes I miss some opportunities is I don't have to have full coverage of an event. Uh, I don't have to cover every single line that comes out of Michael Moore's mouth. Right. And I can just kind of hide it in the edit. Like, well, I only filmed a little bit at the beginning of his speech and a little bit at the end of his speech. And I kind of ran around the room and I was recording audio the whole time. So maybe if there was a really good line, I could cover it up with some other shot I have. But they are just trained on these people. I mean, they're practically doing a live feed out. Right. Uh, so it's just a different game. Uh, but it's because they want to have they want to have 100% coverage so that whatever is decided in the edit, we need to include that line, they, they have it. Whereas I, you know, if someone says, hey, include that really great line that Michael Moore had, I might not actually have it on camera. Right. Okay. Interesting. But because I only have to fill a five-minute video instead of a 30-minute episode, uh, I can. I don't have to shoot nearly as much, and I don't need a, a team of 20 people to do it. Did you drop any cameras this time? This time, no, I didn't. <laughs> I mean, you're still there, right? Plenty of time left. Right, but I have. I mean, that was that. That was a major consideration in packing my gear. Was I need to bring two cameras, so I have a GH5 and a GH5S. I have four lenses, which I really do need all of them, but uh, you know, if I dropped one, I'd be okay. I could make it work. Well, what else? What else is interesting there in Iowa you can share with us? Well, I don't know. It's not really an Iowa thing, but I've been shooting with my... I've actually been now really using that new uh, Peak Design travel tripod. Oh, I got mine. It's somewhere. Where Have you it? used yours much? Uh, no, I've like took it out and played with it for a second, but I haven't used it yet. Yeah, I got it somewhere. Let me show. <clears throat> Hang on. I'm very happy with it. I like the the form factor of it. I mean, that's why I got it was because it's it's it folds up real small, so it's great for traveling with. Um, <sighs> it's I think it's roughly the same height as my other travel tripod, which is not always the best height when I'm on a riser at an event. You know. Like everyone else around me has like giant cameras and giant tripods that go up ten feet. And mine is like <laughs> just high enough to get over the crowd and get the shot. Now it came with a really nice case, like a fabric case. Do you yeah. use that, or do you just leave that at home no. and just roll with the tripod? Yeah, I just left that at home. I mean, this thing will get beat up. I know it. Um, I'm not I'm not too worried about it. You know, the one thing about this that for a second freaked me out and kind of confused me was, you know how there's like the four things that open for the legs to yeah. telescope? Yeah. I, I like this design because when you fold it up, when you push the leg down in one hand movement, you can close, close them, them all. Yeah. But you gotta be careful because there's a fifth one. Do you see the fifth one? Oh. The big one? How does that open? There's a giant one at the top, which I accidentally flipped open once. And it actually takes the whole like leg off. Oh, yeah, I just did like, it. Like the foot comes up. Uh -oh. But it, it was funny because I was at a Bernie Sanders rally and I flipped all of these open, didn't realize I'd accidentally flipped open the fifth one that is a little bit harder to flip open. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like a clip it's a on it bit to keep it shaped. from doing it, yeah. But I, I flipped all of them open, not really realizing what I was doing. And then and I the just let the whole, <laughs> I let all the legs just slide down like this. <laughs> and the leg just, yeah, it just shot off the end. That's funny. <laughs> and um, it took me like 10 minutes to figure out how to put the leg back on. And I'm just standing there like scrambling. Like I need to be set up for this event and I'm going to screw this up. The one thing I really love is the head, right? Because I'm yeah. like not having the stick that sticks off the side is great. And it just, you spin this little ring and then this moves in you know any direction and then you spin it and it instantly locks it in that position and it locks it really well it feels like don't you think like it's yeah solid. it works really well i think my only complaint about the head is even though it works perfectly i'd love a little bit more visual feedback like i can't really tell when i've locked the you know you you, you clip the the quick release plate in mm -hmm. and this is like a specially designed head that the quick that uh, Peak Design kind of made. It's, it's not really like any other tripod head. 
you you put it in the quick you put it in the quick release plate and then you turn this little dial that locks it and it does have a little like unlock and lock symbol but it's it's impossible to tell visually which one you're on why is that no it's not there's well, the little just... white line under the the release oh i guess i see that yeah so when it's unlocked they're immediate they're lined up here i'll show our viewers yeah okay i i, I was wrong but I, I guess I want like this more shows color. This or... release is unlocked, and then I spin this. And now it's locked, and you can't undo it. Yeah, I find myself just tugging on the button to confirm that it's locked. I, I don't. See. Well, really like you said, like I, I haven't used it in the field yet, and you have, so your criticisms yeah. I'm sure are valid. Um, but it could also be that you're an idiot. You know, just we don't want to yeah. discount that possibility. <laughs> I but also it's don't so know why, compact, but I feel but it's like dense, the... it's heavy. For its size. Yeah, it is, it is heavy for for how compact. You got it the is. carbon fiber one too, didn't you? Yes, I did. I got and the even stupid that's aluminum pretty, one because I'm still poor. feels chunky, but it's, it's it's light. I mean, compared to a a full size tripod. The other thing that's weird to me is, I don't know why. You tell me if this feels weird to you. Locking the ball head, it feels like it's going the wrong direction to me. Like I, it almost, I want to like tighten it the other way. Hmm. Let me let me play with it here a second. I don't know why I feel that way. It just feels counterintuitive to me the way I'm tightening it. Um, no, because I think like if you're looking down on it, you know, it's a clockwise rotation to lock it like a screw. Is kind of right. How my so brain righty tighty, yeah. It. It's a righty tighty, wouldn't you say? Also, this is kind of a cool little design that I didn't appreciate until maybe day seven of using this tripod. Do you notice that the the dial that moves the center column up and down? It actually pops in and out. Yeah. Kind of like to help you turn it, but then it like has more of a low profile. It slides back in. So oh, I didn't found a lot you, of cool things. I didn't realize you could. I, I thought it was popped out. It was always loose, but it can be out and tighten. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, the in and out is independent of the tightness. I, that I didn't figure out. That's cool. Well, if anyone was curious about the the Peak Design travel tripod, not that I'm, not that I'm advertising for them, uh, I bought this. <laughs> they like have to pay else. us for that. Yeah, <laughs> but I I do think this is like the one environment taking it on the campaign trail, like next to an NBC reporter and their giant camera and their giant uh, tripod. This is one place where I feel self conscious bringing a travel tripod because it's like. I know when I set up on the risers with all the rest of the media, my tripod is going to be the slimmest one, <laughs> the weakest one, perhaps. And I, I wonder if it'll do the job. But it, aside from being a little bit, maybe just a little bit too short for events, but yeah. it's been good enough. Um, you know, I, I almost thought, like, maybe I should take but this. You've, you've got a little tripod envy is what you're saying standing there. You're just feeling maybe well, a little inadequate with the size of your That I should tripod. feel that way. But I, I have to say, like... The tripod has done its job. It hasn't like mm -hmm. bounced around or lost its footing or been unable to support the gear that I have. Like it, it stands up to this test. Of do you hang a bag the from the trail. center column just to make sure it's nice and heavy and weighted, or do you not even worry about that? I don't, but yeah, you, I could. Yeah, I've thought about just like you know the little like a little articulating arm that I use for a microphone. Yeah. I've thought like if I wanted to get some more height on the tripod, maybe I could just like put that on the top, <laughs> get another foot. Yeah, that would be one way to go. I actually don't think that would support the camera very well. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a good idea. Hey, should we tell our friends about Squarespace? We should, yeah. Handy Filmmakers is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your filmmaking business. A lot of the things I do on my website are actually pretty simple. Like I'll I create a new page every time I have a new story to tell. So right now I'm thinking about the recount films that I've made uh, from Iowa. So I set up a page, griffinhammond.com slash recount, where I'm just placing all of those. But I also think about if I were to like lose my job tomorrow, how Squarespace would help me start hustling and making money. There's e-commerce tools. So if I want to set up 
a checkout. I mean, I can start selling merch. Oh, Handy Filmmakers merch. We need some merch. <laughs> or sell my own films through my website. Whatever life sends my way, I'm prepared to sell myself as a brand, put myself out there, make some money. That's fantastic. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash griffin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You know, as long as we're talking about the Peak Design Travel Tripod, did you see the picture of Peter? <laughs> I did. I didn't know if I was allowed to talk about it on the show, but gosh, that oh, yeah. was uh, pretty cute. Oh, you did. Tw you tweeted it out, did you not? We will yeah, link yeah. to your tweet. Did Peak Design respond to your tweet? Uh, they didn't. So this was... <laughs> I. Uh, Peter loves my filmmaking equipment, so I was home for a couple days uh, before heading back out to Iowa. One of my... One of my pieces that he likes the most, he loves my Zoom audio recorder. Sure. Who, wh he loves what baby doesn't around. love a Zoom yeah. H5? Is that what you get? Get a Zoom H5 for yeah. your baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, he loves pushing all the buttons and the dials, and, and he just carries it around. He's, he's so grateful when I give it to him, so I let him play with that sometimes. But I took the Peak Design tripod out of my bag, and he was very interested in it. And I thought, well, he needs to know why, like what this thing is. So I opened up the legs and like just put it on the floor and he was he was looking at it. And so I explained to him, because it seems like at 14 months old, he understands everything. So I just explained to him what a tripod does. And then I took his little wooden camera that he has <laughs> and placed it on there. And I think he got it. <laughs> I think he gets yeah, He looks like he's ready to go. For. He's, he's ready yeah. to start filming something. Hey, look, he's pushing the button yeah. in the picture. He's saying cheese. Yeah. Well, that's what I that's what I think is so fascinating. I mean, you've you've gone through this several times as a father. I'm just now learning how much a young child understands. Like he definitely knows that the wooden camera is a representation of a real camera. He knows what a real camera does. He knows that the toy camera we pretend to take pictures, but he knows how a, a fake picture works on a fake camera. <laughs> My daughter went through a phase where I would take videos of her with the iPhone, you know? And before yeah. the video is even done, I'm still just trying to get this video. She's saying, I want to see, I want to see. She wants to watch the video that's being recorded right. as we're recording. And I'm like, no, you're doing something I want to record. Just keep <laughs> doing it. And as soon as you start recording, she would yeah. want to watch the video. Well, there's that principle in documentary filmmaking that you can't, and in, in science too, that principle about you can't observe something without changing it. Mm-hmm. So the wow. ethics of documentary, like, should you even show up with a camera? Because now you're not really capturing truth anymore. But yeah, you, you learn that so much deeper with a child. <laughs> the moment you try to film them do anything, they stop doing it. Yep. Bum -ba -dum. So you're in Iowa till when? Through caucus day, Monday, and then... What's interesting about caucus day, it's, it's a nighttime thing. All the Iowans have to do this caucus. And so they, the results will come in overnight. Someone will have a victory party. But then all these candidates, they only have a week before the New Hampshire primary. And so they go immediately. Like they get on a plane at 3 a.m. that they've chartered and they just go straight to Manchester. It's crazy. And then yeah. is it Nevada all the same after thing. New, New Hampshire? Hampshire? New, after New Hampshire is you in Nevada. Yeah. And you might be out here for that. Is that right? TBD? Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I, well, if you are, maybe uh, we can squeeze in a uh, podcast episode together. Yeah, in person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, I do owe the people our, our lighting episode. I promised them last time, but uh, wasn't quite ready to, to pull it off today. So, yeah. We could even do that in person. That might even be easier. You could just help me. Oh, set that up would the be lights. a lot easier. Yeah. Hey, there's an idea. We'll yeah. see. Well, my friend, unless there's anything else, I feel like uh, that's another one of the books. Yeah, I, I would just say keep an eye on my, my films here from the campaign trail. You can go to griffinhammond.com slash recount, or you could just download the recount app, which is the company I work for. I've got uh, it look on for it my phone. iPhone in the App Store or for Android. I like it. It's, it's really no nonsense. You just go in and all the videos are right there. You hit play, and it's very uh, focused on getting you to the video content doesn't get in your way yeah. with a bunch of nonsense which is great and this is not an advertisement for the recap <laughs> they nope. didn't pay us well they pay me they pay you 
but <laughs> by, they by pay weekly. me for my full time job. Yes, and they pay me nothing, which you right. know, we could try and address that maybe. Yeah, let me let me talk to some people. <laughs> Just put me on the old payroll. All right, my friend, we will talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks right. everyone. Have fun in Iowa. Bye everybody. Do we have an intro? I didn't see one. I've totally lost the script. I'm looking for it right now. I found it. You'll edit out all my mistakes I made this episode, please. <laughs> <laughs>